Hello my soccer universe, last one for uh, this past weekend and boy uh, those videos are, I mean especially now that's the beginning of, of the month and I have to up to the schedules and all whatever, it's a lot of work and yes I know people say maybe you shouldn't do this because uh, do them a different channel because they don't get that much room. For me, a, I'm interested in everything that I'm showing you here, uh, especially the calculations that I make and second of all this is my way of really sharing some of my thoughts. If I would share all of my thoughts, I would, after every game or every highlight, I would uh, record something. And believe me, there's a lot to say and I have of the stuff. I'm doing these videos and then I'm thinking, hmm, this you should have said, this you should have said, this you should have said, oh, you missed this. Cannot happen all. But for me, this is in a way a therapy, especially now in lockdown where, um, let's put it that way, I cannot. I can only discuss the biggest points with my immediate family because, frankly, they are not that interested in soccer, which is fine. They don't need to be. And li and my big daughter is actually uh, developing some interest, so we might get there. Uh, and before we talk more about what actually happened, I'm wearing Valencia for no particular reason except that I want to wear Barcelona, but I want to put up this one up here. I didn't want to wear the away jersey and then I said okay let's Valencia didn't have a bad week it's probably my favorite jersey of all of those here second favorite maybe third favorite yeah it's definitely in the top three let's give this jersey some love it's an excellent jersey and boy were the things happening I probably will skim over just a few things because we could go deep on almost every single subject here uh, it started with Real Madrid losing at home to Levante um, and typically yeah I don't care about the league fashion in a way which is so un-Madrid like and yeah um, Zidane is in trouble and that usually, usually means that if Zidane is being uh, rumored to get the sack he usually recovers from 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 from, the, from that well. We have, of course, a, a highly entertaining Via Real a Real Sociedad game. We will spend some time on. But of course, Messi's contract leaking out, and that's burning him on to do a radical performance, especially in the first half. Uh, I'm not even talking about the Copa del Rey. We just will look at some results there. Um, in France, ah, boy, where shall we start? Saying that we only have a new leader, that's the least of it in, in, in a way. We had PSG, the leader, losing to Loli Lorient, who had a great week. We had a riot at the Marseille training ground. Just to go that. And then I thought, you know, I had completely forgotten, but I thought about, yeah, and in Portugal, maybe this time the, in the video, I can only mention the Portuguese results uh, kind of in passing. No, because we did Lisbon Derby uh, with quite a high point at the end. Not spoiling it, I, I don't want to really, really spoil it, but these guys here, the only Portuguese team that I have, and I need to get now the other two of the big three, these are out of the title race, more or less. I mean, amazing, amazing, amazing storyline. So let's get into it. I don't want to make this a huge video, but it probably might end up being. We have to start in the Copa del Rey. I actually saw the overtime of uh, Betis against the Real Sociedad. This was a game that I I did not watch any highlights at all, but I had the feeling that the Real Sociedad actually had a little bit better of the game. I think that even took the lead, and I, I can't, I'm not even pulling up. Uh, uh, Betis E, E equals an S, and O, and overtime they scored the two goals in a game that was fully with fog. I should have probably watched Sevilla against Valencia, I don't know why I didn't, 3-0, uh, but that was the big name matchup. Same thing for Rayo against Bar Barcelona, 2-1 win, and then Alcoyano actually had a halftime lead against Athletic Club, the guys who eliminated Real Madrid, but now uh, Bilbao turns it around, which sets us up for the following uh, quarterfinals, which already start today, uh, Almeria against Sevilla. I think Levante via Real is a fun game. We have Granada Barcelona fun, and then of course Betis Bilbao sounds also with Bilbao now going a little bit up. That also sounds like a fun matchup. Already spent a minute on Copa del Rey. Let's go into La Liga. Um, I think we have to start with Real Madrid against Levante. Um, 
that the game will not go in the right right direction is was already done after 10 minutes and you know i was not fully well because there was the milan game and so i didn't really see much of the first half but then uh when i saw how how, how, how the game is going i actually watched the entirety of the second half and uh quickly skimmed over what uh the highlights were in the first half Eda Militao gets sent off in the ninth minute. Finally, he plays Sergio Ramos is sitting out there. He gets sent off last man. <clears throat> Let's put it that way. If this was in a full stadium, I don't think he gets sent off. Still, not not deterred. The cross plays a nice ball to Asensio. Great shot. Uh, make it 1-0 Real Madrid. And, and you think, yeah, maybe Real Madrid has shown some care character, but it falls apart. Uh, Morales with a great shot in the third second, also really great, great goal, uh, gets the equalizer and then in the second half, I honestly, I was sitting there, I was act actually wearing my dark blue Real Madrid jersey and I thought, hmm, let's test my jinx, you know, I have to test jinx, if I'm wearing the team's jersey in front of TV, the team is gonna, gonna, gonna lose and I, I, I usually know that, I said, it's such a beautiful jersey, we had my aunts in, in invited, I know they like dark blue, so I was wearing that, that one, let's test the jinx and it worked like a charm seemingly and I didn't necessarily want to jinx Real, Real Madrid, but I have to tell you, there was, it was, we were watching and it was kind of, yeah, when will Levante score the winner? You thought it when the penalty came, that was a great save by Kurkuta on Roger Mati in the 64th, but Roger Mati then uh, in the 78th also. Nicely controlling the ball and pulling it into net in the 78th. Gets the winner for Levante, fully deserved. And you always thought, there's an, when is Real Madrid coming? It was never really coming. Levante played his home rather easily. Um, as I said, Valencia against Elche, since I'm very Valencia, gets a 1-0 uh, win. It is a derby, so kind of important one. Villarreal against the Real Sociedad. I scream at the opener scoring by Dani Parejo. Uh, that is a goal, I mean, already the builder, but then he just how he slams it into the net. One of the great goals that I've seen this weekend. There were many great goals. Salah, we'll talk about one in France, but that would have been my pick because it's just spectacular to look at. Um, Villarreal, though, they were the better team, especially in the first half, but they could not convert their chances. In the second half, the game was a lot more even, and there were chances for Real Sociedad to equalize, but it's the same thing with Real Sociedad all the time, that they are never... Um, they're missing a little bit of a punch up front. They are still playing very pleasantly watch uh, in Villarreal too. I mean, they are still two of my favorite teams in Spain, although oh, oh, overall they will not threaten for any Champions League spots. Really, really, one is uh, drawing too many games, the other one is scoring too little goals. Um, so I really thought, yeah, that Villarreal probably deserve to get the win, but will not get out of that. And then Isaac in stoppage time scores the equalizer. That was at least, it was at the beginning, uh, a good goal and a second, and in between, it was entertaining. Uh, it was probably worth watching, David, but it could have been better. Um, I should have also watched Cadiz against Atletico Madrid. Suarez in the 28th with a great free kick, but Alvaro Negredo um, equalizes, and you could see some frailty in the Atletico Madrid defending. Uh, Saul with another great goal. The cross comes in and he just puts his foot in there and, you know, with, with the tip of his toe gets it into the net. Uh, great, great goal. Then maybe it should have been a penalty there. That was then decided not because he's kind of leaning with the hand on the ground when it hits him. Uh, that could have given Cadiz an equalizer. However, then a penalty after the half, uh, Suarez again. And he definitely has a point to prove. Uh, extensively 3-1, but Alvaro Negredo again uses some frailty in the Atletico Madrid defending, which is uncharacteristically, uh, to make it 3-2, um, then a great save by Oblak, but in the end, uh, Koch in the 88th puts the game to rest, and as we'll see, Real Madrid, uh, Atletico Madrid flying. Uh, so a little bit of Granada sells Celta, but well, nil nil draw, let's not mention it. I really wanted to watch Barcelona against Bilbao and we had it on, I think it was on a day, day before, uh, El Mundo, one of the proper newspapers in Spain, leaked Messi's contract details where, uh, you know, kind, kind of, this is the contract that ruins uh, the club. It doesn't. 
I mean, I was not surprised about the bonus. I mean, there are a few uh, weird things in there, but it does not actually go against Messi, in my opinion, it shows what bad dealings the old regime made. And for me, it is not what was in the counter gets interesting. I still want to know who leaked that freaking thing and whose interest is that, especially with the headline going, yeah, this counter is ruining Bar Barcelona. Everything to me points and although he has denied it to the Bartomeu people, but I think something there. Don't wanna waste much more time on this. Or however, I find I find this a rather curious story. I also I think Messi deserves every little bit of that contract. I mean, under him, I think what was it for 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 forty percent of all league titles uh, the Barca ever won were with Messi in the squad. Eighty percent of the Champions Leagues were with Messi in, in the squad, and I think Messi him himself in that time period, they, as they calculate, was responsible for at least three hundred thousand uh, euros in net gain as well. So, I mean, he is worth that money. Pay him up. It is the other that continues the Griezmann's and whatever crappy uh, dealings they had. Uh, the the Belays, uh, even um, what, what was it? Umtitis. Those are the the count count where you wasted tons of tons of tons of money. Messi was maybe irked, put probably his best half, uh, one half performance in with a free kick. That also got to be seen, seen to believe. Maybe that is my favorite, favorite goal. The way he put the free kick nonchalantly in, and you, uh, the picture has to be there is the wall of Bilbao players, there's a player lying behind, which is all due to Messi because Messi is the one who, who shoots, shoots on something below. So now every wall has the guy lying, which I find somehow ridiculous. And then there was a, li uh, a, a guy who was running back. And Messi picks exactly the corner in which the guy was running and it was so well placed he cannot get in. Great goal. Uh, was actually a really good performance of Barcelona. Um, that day then give up the goal and that was an Alba on, on, on goal. But I don't know what he was protesting uh, to give them a 1-1. One, one, but uh, the Griezmann um, goal, I mean, Minguesa nicely pulling across to Griezmann, gave Barcelona a good victory. And this was a really an interesting and good, 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 good game that I was actually, I wanted to do some other stuff. I said, no, I'm too tired. I don't want to prepare now the bonus league review. Let's just enjoy this game and enjoy. I did. Uh, Betis then laid a 1 0 over Osasuna. In the standings, just look at it. With this Real Madrid loss, we have now Atletico Madrid 10 points ahead of the two giants with a game in hand. That is only 79%. Here is down to maybe uh, that they are rated in third, but it's over. It's over. I think we don't have a title race there. Uh, I, we also know that Barcelona Real Madrid will make it in the Champions League. So it's basically for fourth spot where Sevilla has the best chances. I don't think either Villarreal and Real Sociedad, for the reasons I said before, will go in there. I think the relegation battle is the one thing that's really intriguing in Spain uh, this season. Elche here, now they have been falling, you know, they have been mid-table and they keep falling, 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 even with two games in hand now. Um, so they are um, favored there, Huesca and the Real Valladolid, but you know, Osasuna not out there, Alaves not out there, Eibar maybe, and I think we can also spend a whole lot of time on Valencia. We won't, but uh, they are not out of trouble there. Uh, expected standings, I think, are way more interesting because we have, we have Atletico Madrid, you see, it's one, two, three, four. It is how it is. And then we are around the Real so they will battle it out for who finishes fifth. And then for the seventh spot, if there is a seventh spot based on uh, that gives us to Europe, then there's a race with Real Betis at the moment enjoying a little bit of an advantage there. But anything from Getafe to Betis could well go in there. And the relegation battle, yeah, as I said, why the Little West kind of Elche look down there. Uh, in the next round, uh, we already said we had Copa del Rey, but now uh, we also have uh, the next round. <sighs> what matchups can we pick out? Real Betis against Barcelona is usually one that is with goals. I think Atletia Cell Celta is a game that's a little sounds interesting to me. It's a Monday game, so you will get again the La Liga review uh, late. Um, mm, yeah, Bilbao Valencia. I think is also one of those league classics, but it's not Real Madrid at Huesca. Let's see how the Merengues will um, come back. Let's move to France. First of all, Lorient had one of the best weeks in the whole uh, year or, you know, 
the past. First, they get a vital three to win over Dijon, uh, which was a relegation medal, which they definitely needed to win. Both teams needed to win that one. Lorient gets that win. And then, and I'm just jumping ahead now a little bit, they also get a three to win over PSG. Uh, in the shock result, and a fully deserved one, and even better. Yes, they take the lead to Avergel. Um, at the time, they probably they should have led already by two. Ne two Neymar penalties, one before the half, one uh, a little bit in, in the second half, give PSG a 2-1 lead, not playing well, but you know, they have the lead. However, they cannot hang on to, on to it. Yes, they had uh, important game, uh, players missing, missing like uh, Navas or Verratti and, and, and so on. And Visser gives uh, Lorient the 80th an equalizer. And then you think, yeah, maybe uh, they will hang on to the draw and uh, PSG will say, oh, lucky. No, they try to push forward. But with like Manchester United against uh, Bajakshi, everyone pulling forward. And uh, their cow, the cow, the cow, cow, the Murphy is then running straight to goal and putting it away. 3 2 Lorient. Absolute great for that for the team uh, that is bottom because that gave them a big shot in the arm of surviving uh, league. Uh, we had uh, Lyon Bordeaux, a game that was really going for a draw, and then came a great goal from a very acute angle from Dubois. After Cornet overhit a cross, actually, uh, to give Lyon the lead and the win. And then I think the big game that we already identified was Marseille against Stadrenne. It says postponed. Yes, the fans, the ultras stormed the training ground and completely destroyed everything in there. I mean, that they are unhappy with Marseille's going. And I've been saying it. I mean, it's almost, uh, you can see disaster coming. This was a team that two months ago was fighting for the top spots. And since then they have been losing. And uh, the coach is saying, yeah, it's probably me. I don't need to be here. I can leave. And, you know all not a good feeling all around and then if I see Gustavo Payet I mean uh, is it Gustavo whatever Dimitri Payet uh, the way he looks unfit and you know it's just passion missing in in, in, in a way do I con I understand the anger do I condone the actions no absolutely not you should not do that you have other ways to protest um, but again at Marseille I always said Marseille is one of the hottest cities in Europe uh, and that can always happen and in France and in general hot-headed people and I think we will see something at Nantes coming very soon as well so that game did not happen um, Lille with a narrow win although it was full deserved over Dijon um, takes first place and then as I said Nantes against Monaco if not, would have lost by two goals, they would have fallen behind Lorient. They get very late the consolation goal, but Maripan and Folland give Monaco a fully deserved tunnel lead. It could have been more. And from what I hear, Dominic is the first coach in North history to not win any of his first five games. And I think in those five games, they only had seven shots on goals or some something ridiculous like, like that. Not is probably one of my favorite teams in France and I'm actually very very afraid that next season we will have not not in league uh, which would be an absolute shame because this is a, a team full of tradition that absolutely belongs in league uh, but with Raymond Dante and Dominic at the helm no uh, they, it will not happen so lots of changes up Lille and Olympique Lyon overtake PSG. It's actually a three-point lead over PSG for Lille. Uh, just look, look at the chances. PSG's chances took a hit by 20% uh, just because the two over, over, overtook it. It's the lowest that they had this season. Monaco also might join in there. Monaco is in a really, really good run, so Monaco might join in there. Uh, Rennes probably not in anymore. Marseille all the way down to ninth. Uh, Bordeaux hit a little bit of a, a level and let's see Lorient. Lorient I think was at the beginning of after we get around 70% of being relegated. They slashed in half with two really 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 important victories for them. I actually would hope that they stay in. I don't have much hope for Nemo although I really like the jurors with, with the crocodile you know crocodile being my favorite uh, animal. I sent it in another big name team that should not be down there. Let's just say it as is, but there's a lot of bad work done. Um, adjusting the standings, yeah, it will lift Marseille a little bit up, but I honestly don't see Marseille winning the games in hand. 
I don't. And they have a pretty rough week coming up, which we'll see in the back uh, in a bit. When we look at expected standings, it's still PSG ahead of Lyon and Lille, but it's now only a three point advantage. And we gotta see. Monaco here, as I said, they might join. I think they are straight in, into fourth place, and Rennes stayed straight into fifth. And then we'll see the rest. With Reims at 11th, you can cut it. This is potential re re relegated teams, but it really starts with Nantes. And as I said, I'm afraid that Nantes will go down. Uh, we have a midweek round. Uh, if you want to watch Disaster, Lance against Marseille is definitely one, one to watch. We have Bordeaux against Lille. I think that's a big game there. Uh, Lyon should get something from Dijon. Um, since we talk about Lorient, let's see if they can back it up against Rennes. Uh, it would not be unusual. PSG against Nîmes. And then, great name matchup, but bad team, saint Etienne against Nantes. So let's see where that goes. And then we should have a Le Classique, however, because of all the riots, it might not be played. Not Lille. Uh, we have to watch where uh, Lyon is playing against Strasbourg, also not that easy of a game. Um, yeah, and Monaco against Nîmes. I think Mon 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 Monaco plays midweek also against Nice, so they uh, have two, two derbies coming up. Portuguese Cup. I'm telling you, it's a lot to speak, and we're already over 20, 20, 20 minutes. The poor Portuguese Cup sees probably. The favorites going through with Benfica, Braga, Porto, Estoril beats Maritimo in overtime. That's um, so, uh, so a surprise. And already, and then we get uh, in the draw, we have Braga against Porto, local uh, derby, more, more or less. And Estoril uh, plays against Benfica. Probably a Porto Benfica final, which potentially could save Benfica season because Benfica lost the derby in the last minute, more or less. Uh, that derby was headed for a nil-nil, fully deserved. Um, in, in in a way, from what I saw, the highlights were really lowlights. In many in many ways, there were there was maybe one good chance for sports, sporting and one for Ben Ben Benfica, and then, uh, yeah, <laughs> deep in stoppage time, Matheus heads it in and gives Sporting a one-nil lead. Porto before that had beaten Rio of uh, two-nil through Luis Diaz and Evan Eva Nielsen. So in the standings there, and you can see it now, Benfica is down to 6%. Sporting and Porto level on points, uh, level, not level on points, but level in the chances for championship. It will be between those two, and they're meeting rather soon as well. Uh, in Portugal, only the top six have a positive goal difference. I said from six on, everyone could potentially still get relegated, although Santa Clara looks all right, um, especially if we look at the expected standings. Santa Clara had the chasing pack, and I think Rio Ave is probably also safe, but everyone else has a decent chance of being relegated with Ferenc and Belenges being on the worst end. Uh, we have again weird rounds in Portugal. They need to get by the Champions League in, in, in into normal rhythm again, but I guess they try to squeeze as many rounds in now as possible. Benfica is against Vigimaresh. Uh, yeah, if it was anything going for Benfica. We have Maritimo Sporting and Belenenses Porto, which should give easy wins, but we have to see about that. Uh, and then we have from San Sandel another round, uh, Braga Porto. That might be a trip. Uh, you know, step a uh, stumbling stone there, and Gil Vicente against Sporting is uh, the other game. We're through it all, and I uh, barely stumbled up on everything, so great on me. Please drop a line if you want to add anything, as there's so many things happening, and I cannot really afford to go deep there, but you know, I tried at least a little bit. Um, drop a line below, give me a thumbs up, enjoy this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.